So uh, anyway, here we are in a beautiful Sonora uh, state, Mexico, just a little bit south of Nogales. As you can see, uh, it's it's much more lush and verdant and uh, green down here because uh, you get all those rains coming up from the south that don't quite make it to Tucson. That's why Tucson is bone dry. Uh, but uh, down here, it's very green. There's, you know, helianth, this annuus uh, everywhere along the roadside. It's got a nice uh, accordia right here, which is... Uh, I believe one of the Mutissiae subfamilies of the asters. Then you got a nice uh, Argemony over here. Nice prickly poppy. And of course, uh, there's uh, the route to north. The train yards here are kind of weird. There's not very, uh, they're not as, you know, they just kind of look like little short lines, but it, it ends up being one of the main routes uh, north. Anyway, here's that Argemony species, prickly poppy. You can see those dozens of stamens. It does all very nice. Look at the leaves though, very glabrous. You know, they got spines on them, very spiny, but uh, very glabrous too. Then there's some sort of cucurbit uh, down here, if I can uh, make it true here without stepping in any human shit. Nice little cucurbit going out. You see those leaves, just uh, let tons of little tiny trichomes on there, giving it a somewhat, uh, a somewhat velvety I feel to it. Bacchus, Serethroides right there. Another member of the Asteraceae. Uh, Pharomex right there. I remember uh, riding that uh, in the about 2005. Wonderful railroad line, you know? Uh, the, a lot of the railroaders down here are probably still alcoholics, you know? And a lot of the railroads up north uh, in the United States are alcoholics too, but they just cover it up more and be sure to... Uh, be uh, able to blow under a .02 by the time uh, they show up for work. Look at this nice suit on a failure. Another aster. God, they, the Mexican aster diversity blows my mind. And then here you got uh, Cucurbita, possibly Fetidisma. Po I mean, it's probably not. Fetidisma is the one we get in the Mojave. Coyote melon is just the uh, name, the uh, common name for it. You can see it's desert adapted. Look at how blue it is with tons of, again, tons of tiny little strigos hairs on there. You see that? That's how you know this is a plant from a dry climate. And it's uh, obviously a native. I mean, it's, look at that, you got all those. You can tell a lot of the European invasives because they don't tend to have this, uh, the rough texture or any of the other adaptations to dry climates that so many of these do. These melons uh, taste awful, by the way. You know, at least the, the ones of, uh, the closely related species I've seen in the, the Mojave do. A friend of mine actually bit into one and I said it was the most repugnant thing he ever tasted, but he tastes all the plants and mushrooms, you know? Even the deadly amanitas, he just doesn't swallow them. Oh, you got an ambrosia over there. Ambrosia's got about, fuck, that's a clusterfuck. Probably 200 species at least. Very diverse, here's that ambrosia. Is this that ambrosia? Yeah. Oh yeah. And of course these get the, the little burrs. They don't, you know, oh wow, very pungent. It does, you know, they don't look too much like an aster. They're very, very weird morphologically. The flowers tend to occur on spikes. You get the male flowers up top and the female flowers on the bottom. Plants are monoecious, meaning you got male and female flowers on the same uh, plant. That cucurbit, this is all the same plant. Look at it. Just growing in the parking lot of the goddamn permit office over here. There's that Argemony again. All right, just a quick little uh, clip right here. There's Parthenium, uh, either Tomentosum or uh, another species. I forget the, I forget what he just told me. But as you can see, just like the Parthenium integrifolium that you see up there in the Midwest, it's got uh, these corymbiform uh, clusters of capitulescences, and uh, each capitula has only. Uh, five tiny ligules. Those are the daisy rays, those tiny teeth looking things poking out uh, of the sides of the capitula right there. There's a lot of different species. That, there's more species of Parthenium in Mexico than there are in the goddamn uh, United States, I believe. And of course, just the abaxial surface is extremely uh, tomentose and fuzzy. You'd make a nice ass wipe if you needed to, and it's growing on a, a volcanic rock, probably some intermediate. Uh, uh, Rhyolitic intermediate bullshit with a uh, decent amount of silica in it, but it's all just talus. It's all just alluvium from the surrounding volcanic mountains.
And I think this is a Natalina, I don't know, but there's uh, you could see we're in this wash. It's mostly uh, volcanic rocks. But have you ever really looked at uh, any of the say Salponoi flowers of the pea family? Because if you if you haven't, here's your chance right there. You can see you got that one. Uh, see that thing with the green the green part at the bottom. That green part's the ovary, and then you got the style coming out. That's the female part, and it's uh, that's what receives the pollen that matures into about an eight inch long bean pod. This is a Seychelle Pina Pulcarima, by the way. Uh, you got those five petals of the yellow, and then you got the the five sepals uh, back there. See those the red sepals, but the uh, this, uh, you know, not all of them, uh, not all the uh, members of the Fabaceae, but certainly a lot of them have 10 stamens. See those things with those little purple anthers on the end? Those are the stamens. Uh, just really interesting morphology. And you can see this this bottom sepal right there. It's got a, it's like a cup-shaped sepal, you know? So, and then, of course, the banner, the little banner uh, petal right there is a, I, I believe that retains most of the nectar. These are hummingbird pollinated, and that's where the, uh, the hummingbird sticks his little schnoz and it gets the sugar there by uh, uh, picking up some of the pollen off any of those 10 anthers. And then, uh, what's that? Pyridoli. Oh, you found a pyridoli. Anyway, so you got a nice Seisalponoid uh, lifestyle going on, you know? The, the morphology on these flowers is uh, extremely confusing. There's many more, I believe, than three subfamilies of the pea family. I was wrong. One of the earlier videos, I said that uh, it's, you know, like I said, the taxonomy is getting uh, reworked, re- uh, Recircumscribed over there. Let's see what he found over here. Oh, it's uh, one of the rock daisies. It's a species of uh, peridoli. Does it smell? Yeah, smell it. Oh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Look at this black uh, veneer on this uh, extrusive igneous rock. I wonder what the fuck's going on. Maybe it's metamorphic. I've only found this one on, on volcanic rock. Uh huh. There's a bite inside there, too. Oh. Where's that at? Right there. Oh. Uh... Like Check it out, it has alternate leaves. Wait, I gotta, oh, what's that up there? Is that that Ipomea arborescence or whatever the shit? Oh, yeah. So you can see there's just a the whole forest of a Stenocereus thurbride. It's the, uh, that's the organ pipe cactus over here. It's, uh, it, it, it is hot as balls, but I'm in a shade right now. Here's a nice uh, Fulcuria, species of Ocotillo. You can see it right there. Oh, I just broke the, the little seed pods off. It's in the Ericales order. Fulcuriaceae is the family. About nine or ten species entirely. Is central in uh, Central American, Mexican, I believe. You got you got the uh, the biggest one over there in Baja, Fulcuria columnaris, and you got Fulcuria splendens in Arizona, the Ocotillo. Red flowers, hummingbird pollinated. And it's got a nice, beautiful green stem down there. Just, uh, just covered in the spines, you know. So it's got a photosynthetic stem too. And then I believe the the seeds have a little, uh, they, they were kind of winged, you know, so they can air disperse. This over here is a member of the poinsettia family, Euphorbiaceae. This is a uh, Echolypha, I believe. Again, that's a Euphorb. You can get up there. Give you, give you a nice full frontal shot of that flower over there. Prominent, uh, prominent sexy parts popping up. Got a nice little Selaginella over here too. Beautiful blue uh, lycophyte. And uh, abundant ferns, possibly in not the lena. Oh, and then of course that's, uh, that's the uh, Ipomea arborescence. Which uh, most type of mares are not trees like that, so so that's pretty pretty notable. And you got a hatrofa, not a euphorb, and then there's a bursera, member of the uh, frankincense family somewhere around here too. But uh, it's got bark much like that hatrofa, but it uh, is not. So this is interesting. Here's a little bit of convergence for you. So notice this papery bark, okay, very common in a bursaraceae, the frankincense family, but uh, this. Completely unrelated plant, this Hatropha also has a similar bark structure going on. Right here, you can see much different leaves. There's the Hatropha, but it's also got that similar, similar bark structure. The whole, the Hatropha kind of smells bad too. You know, it does not, it doesn't smell that nice. I'll be honest with you, it doesn't smell nice. Here's the fruit. 
typical uh, euphorb looking fruit, euphorbiaceae, it's the poinsettia family. And then you got those uh, little tiny flowers right there. Too, so it's blooming, but I can't, uh, I guess I could try to zoom in, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I could get up in there. You know, either way, uh, Hatrofa's got a lot of different species in it. Euphorbiaceae, Bursera, of course, frankincense family. It smells absolutely marvelous. The goddamn, uh, when it's got the little berries on it, uh, you crush them up, they smell nice. It, like I said, it's in a frankincense family. It's got those resins. And I believe there's even a, a couple species that have the ability uh, to uh, uh, passively uh, squirt water. It, not water, squirt poisonous uh, resins and terpenes at the beetles that uh, may try to prey on them. They've got these little resin-filled uh, canals and... Uh, those are just lentils, but uh, some of them have these resin-filled cavities that uh, uh, explode at, on uh, any uh, invertebrate uh, and uh, other insect uh, predators. There's those leaves, odd pinnate. I believe most of the bursaras are uh, odd pinnate or at least uh, trifoliate. They got, you know, compound leaves, you know, instead of just simple leaves. Some have simple leaves, though, you know. And some of these get up of, uh, upwards of 80 feet tall. You get some in a, in a baja that are called elephant trees because this uh, trunk it's uh it's, you know almost succulent and of course very papery but uh, sometimes they get these really you know bulbous uh, succulent uh, trunks okay so what you're looking at basically is an individual floret uh, an individual flower that's part of the larger flower cluster uh, of uh, what I believe is the mimosa family in the pea family for basic and this is a uh, acacia farnesiana I guess they uh, moved the uh, were you nervous or something or what? what are you, you're making me nervous. Sit down. <clears throat> this is a Acacia Farnesiana. I guess they, they moved the genus because you got Acacias in the old world on the, on the east side of the Atlantic, old world, and on the west side, the new world, uh, uh, west side of the Atlantic, the new world, that are all clustered into the goddamn genus Acacia. And I guess somebody, I don't know if they based it on molecular phylogenetics. If they based it on molecular phylogenetics, that's really fucking annoying. If they based it on molecular phylogenetics, I would believe it. But I think, you know, sometimes these guys just get excited about taxonomy and they want to swap, you know, and, and split up genera and shit like that. Here's the larger, uh, the plant itself. You can see the seed pods right there. Again, which is just the swollen ovary. Amazing to think that that seed pod uh, basically comes out of uh, the swollen ovary that's at the base of this guy right there. Again, it's Acacia farnesiana. Look at that, uh, that, that pinnate, bipinnate leaf structure, actually. Now, it's it's a kind of a disappointment that this isn't blooming, but, you know, uh, a lot of stuff uh, is not blooming. It's so sporadic. It's such a tropical climate. But uh, this is actually a member of the mallow family uh, known as uh, Saba. And you can see it's got those big-ass pods right there. The flowers on this are pretty spectacular. That's why I said it was... Uh, kind of a drag that it's not uh, blooming right now but uh, you can also see the genus Saba has uh, is just covered in spines the trunk is covered on these uh, these barbs these you know thorny uh, pieces of uh, trunk tissue let's take a little closer look oh yeah there you go there's a nice uh, illustration of uh, those uh, spines those little thorns little corky thorns so far there there again is the uh, the fruit over there Oh, what you got over there? Some uh, epiphytic uh, cactus going on? What is it? Is it my blooming? It's here? I don't know. Those. Please see it? Oh, it's. Oh, those it's spines dying. are barbed. That's uh, it's certainly in the uh, Apuntheoid family. Oh, what's that? Is that a. Uh, young Bursera. Bursera. It's a young Bursera. Agoroides. Of course, yeah, Ambrosia, Ambrosioides, member of the sunflower family. Am Ambrosias are just the, kind of generally a nightmare. To, I mean, I, I like them, you know, the ragweeds, but there's just so many. This is one of the taller growing ones. And then, of course, they have the burrs. They're, uh, you can see right there. Those are the fruits right there. I wish I, I wish I'd caught this seba and flower. Again, the flowers are generally about that big. And it's, uh, it, like I said, it is a malo. It's in the uh, Malvaceae. Here's a better picture of those uh, spines. Right there, see the spines? 
Cetrophus species, which is in the Euphorbiaceae. You can see it's got those uh, glands on the leaf. Now, uh, I'm not sure if those are nectar glands or what. Are they ne are they extra floral nectaries, or what do you think those are? They could also be defensive. Uh, this this plant smells kind of terrible, but it smells kind of nice at the same time. Uh, what confuses me, though, is that these look like somewhat complex flowers, at least for a euphorbia. Euphorbias are notable for having very simplified, reduced flowers, uh, including uh, the famous cyathea. But uh, those glands are really something else. See those glands on the margins of the leaf right there? No. Oh, yeah, it could be, it could be extra floral uh, nectaries to woody ants. Hey, it's pretty odd. That's a Fucuria mcdougalli down there. There's a big one. So there you go, there's this Stenocereus thurbri, the organ pipe, only comes into, into, uh, into the United States, down there in southern Arizona, down by Organ Pipe National Monument. Uh, those fruits are edible, you just got to get them off. I've seen people use a, basically a long uh, vine, not vine, a long uh, stick, a long pole that kind of spreads open at the end, and uh, you just got to scrape the spines off, and they're absolutely delicious. Obviously the bees are having a blast. But uh, they call them pitayas. Now, all species of uh, Stenocereus produce those. I've had a uh, Stenocereus gomosus fruits uh, down there in uh, Baja, California. Uh, absolutely delicious, you know. And they got the betalane pigments, of course, which, uh, you know, since cacti are in the caryophyllales, betalane pigments are the same red pigment that beets have. They, I guess they use the betalanes in lieu of, uh, in lieu of the anthocyanin pigments, you know. Just red pigments. But uh, absolutely delicious fruits. You get that betalane shit all over your hands if you dig into it. Hey there, guy. Don't worry, we mean no harm, you know. Most people are pretty terrible, but, uh, you know, we're, we're okay. We're not there. Uh, we just want to take some pictures of you, you know. I haven't seen anybody who's a member of the genus Gophers in, a, you know, about a year or so. Are you the Sonoran one, huh? What you doing up there? Huh? You just out taking an evening stroll? Okay. All right, well, I hope you have a nice, have a nice time, okay? All right, see you later. There he goes, he's just crawling into the thorn scrub over there. What are you doing? Eh? All right, see, see you later. Take care, you say goodbye. You can see, you can see we've uh, reached this white substrate uh, as opposed to, to that uh, reddish rhyolitic volcanic uh, substrate over there. So we got a, a change up in uh, uh, what's what's growing here a little bit. And you can see it's, I thought this was limestone at first, but it's more like a, like a diorite. Like a, there's a lot of quartz in there. There's, uh, it looks, you know, uh, intrusive. It looks like an intrusive igneous rock. You know, it's got a larger grain size. Got some quartz and bullshit in there. And uh, just overall pretty interesting. But we're higher up now. You got that uh, Fulcuria mcdougalli still going off. But now we've reached uh, some of the oak woodlands. It's a Quercus species right there. Here's a Dodonea. And uh, here's a really interesting agave. Let's show you the leaf blades f uh, first. There you go with those. they beautiful white. Uh, I don't know if that's some sort of stomatal wax or, or uh, what that uh, material is. But... Uh, Either way, it's gorgeous, and of course, they've got uh, those little ciliate hairs coming off the margins. And uh, you get up here and you look at a stock, you can see those. Uh... Well, somebody's screaming. I wonder what that is. I wonder what type of animal that is. Maybe it's just an upset cow. You can see it's got the. Well, the flowers are done now. But uh, there's the fruits. Overall, uh, pretty interesting. Then, of course, just, you know. 9,000 different kinds of legumes. Fabaceae and Asteraceae are the, uh, the main families that they seem to have dominated this, uh, this area. And again, uh, you know, we're probably 200 miles south of Tucson, maybe, not even. And it just, it, you can see it's just so much more lush, you know. It's so much more lush, lush. We get the, right here we get a little bit more of those rains coming up from the south than, uh, you know, Arizona does. So uh, it's it's hot, but it's, uh, it's very verdant, as you can see, it's, it's verdant.
There's a nice Tacoma stands, a relative of your uh, your catalpa trees up there, you know. Chicago loves playing catalpa trees. Bignoniaceae, nice zygomorphic corollas. Tacoma stands, then you got Chalopsis linearis if you go further west. Actually, I think you got them in, in these deserts still. There's the seed pod. There's the fruits. Oh, look, so there you go. There's a Sotol, Dacelerian. And those are... Uh, those big inflorescences, those uh, they, they work like good rods, you know, if you're going to cane someone. And they actually they use to make them as walking sticks and sell them on the other side of the Rio Grande. If you go to like a big bend or something, you know, you can uh, blatantly disobey the signs that tell you not to buy uh, merchandise off uh, the other side. Which is good anyways, you should ignore most of those signs. Anyway, here's a, here's a pretty cool plant, uh, Modalia tristiflora for a sad flower. Because uh, they're black, I guess you know. I guess someone thought it was. I guess someone thought it meant you're you're sad, you know, like you're going to a funeral or something. But uh, I don't feel like that. Anyway, these are related to milkweeds. Uh, they're in that same family of Pastanaceae. Model A is a somewhat large genus with a lot of diversity in it. But just look at those goddamn. Look at those flowers. Oh. Look at look into my Model A. Look at it. You see him right there? Look how beautiful that is. It's like little eyes looking back at you. The beautiful uh, five loved Corolla, all united. These are these are pretty weird, man. You know. <clears throat> and then of course you got a Astralipa sinuata down there. The star fern. Oh fuck. Jesus Christ, look at those spines on it, they're Silurian. Very painful. Ah, oof. If I could show you this, the backside of it, the uh, Astralipus. That's probably one of my favorite uh, genera of ferns, Astralipus. And, uh, that, that doesn't feel too good. That's some um, mimosa just clinging to my flesh. All right. Anyway, I think that's it. I think I'm done for now. You can see a monsoon, uh, those monsoon, those beautiful summer monsoon rains brooding in the horizon as you can see just that massive anvil of a storm cloud there's a monsoon going off i don't know it looks like 15 20 miles away you know it's raining somewhere right now and there's actually some pretty good uh lightning too There's that Desilirian. You can see the granitics down there. The quartz and the diorite and what the shit. It's kind of kind of a rough road. It's a nice oak. Nice quercus. Now, I think this is the thing that he said just opens up at night. I think this is a Ipomea langiflora. And you can see it's just a real fucking stunner over there. Oh, my God. Just, uh, just, uh, just fresh. Just opened up. Look at that. All right, get out of here. Come on. What you doing? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Look at those stamens. Just, just abundant pollen. Where's the style at? Where's the style at in there? I don't know. I don't want to steal any of its any of its juice. And uh, it's just a vine coming out of the ground. Did he's got a codex down there? Or what did they do? Yeah, probably. And in the same genus is that Ipomea arborescens that we've seen. You know, that gets up to like 20 feet tall. Just a uh, very real, uh, it's really something else, huh? So anyway, you, you could see there's a, a species of Opuntia covered in somebody else's shit paper. And then uh, right down there is a uh, what appears to be a juvenile uh, black-tailed rattlesnake. Just uh, hanging out doing his uh, morning hunting. And uh, apparently he's uh, waiting uh, for uh, some... Uh, uh, Food to just kind of whack by, you know. 
It seems to be having a, a lovely night, you know. It's been a good night for reptiles. Sorry about that, guy. I didn't mean to arouse you from your slumber over there. You know, I hope you find another comfortable spot uh, to recline and uh, await your dinner, you know. Again, I apologize, you know, I didn't mean it. You know, he was just hanging out right where my foot is, and then he, I think I just, I think I vibed them out, you know. I think that's what they say in California, you know, you vibe someone out. Isn't he a beaut, though? Look, he's just hanging out, you know. You guys are being really good just hanging out over there, update there, you know. Yet you're wondering what the fuck's wrong with me, huh? Oh, look, he's just so solemnly resting his head on his own, uh, it lower, uh, what do you call that, abdomen, a tail? He's not quite on his tail, which is down there. Just a, just a beautiful, uh, beautiful little guy. Look at us. Look at us, goddamn. You know, whenever whenever I look at reptile, reptiles, they always say, uh, you know, always, I always feel like they're just kind of skeptical of me, you know? They're just kind of doing that side eye thing. Okay, I'm going to leave you alone. Okay, I'm sorry about that. God, that is a beautiful, look at it. Look at that. Oh, yeah, now you're just hamming it up. Now you're just showing off, okay? I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. What do you What do you think of the uh, the orc forest up here? It uh, I don't know what the elevation is. Probably uh, at least four five thousand feet, maybe probably five thousand feet. What do you think of the orc forest, huh? What do you think of Quercus? It's a lovely. Uh, it's a lovely uh, area you live in. Hopefully, uh, shitty human society and its uh, retail economy or uh, slash and burn agriculture doesn't come destroy your home. I hope that. Yeah, I look. I don't. You know, I don't know what that moth was doing. That's probably because of me. That's probably my fault. I'm sorry. You trying to eat your own tail now? What are you doing? Could you eat a moth? What does it taste like? Are they good? Would you do it again? Oh, I know what you're doing. Okay. Oh, you guys are having a date. I see. I'm okay. I didn't. I didn't catch what was going on at first. You know. You guys are waiting to bang. I didn't know that. Just to make sure there's not any more of you coming out of the woodwork here. Okay. You guys going to bang? Is it hot and bothered? Are you hot and bothered? You're just waiting. You were here first. You must be the guy. This must be the male. Go back. Why don't you go, why don't you go just chill over there, okay? Why don't you just go sit down, Jack? You guys are going to bang. Or was it, just a, was it just a lunch date? How about that? That is, you know, that's kind of cute. Rattlesnake romance. Oh, I like your eye band. Oh, God, the fucking mosquitoes are just getting to me. So, you know, I was just sitting here thinking about uh, what a pain in the ass uh, the oaks are, you know, because there's so many different species up here. I believe this is Quercus amorei, but not only that, but, you know, the, the oaks just tend to be pretty uh, phenotypically plastic anyway, you know. You can have leaves on the same plant that look nothing alike. And then I look over here and I saw this giant-ass uh, Sonoran frog. I wonder if this is that one that the hippies try to eat. I don't know. But he's, I mean, he really is. He's uh, the Sonoran toad. I mean, this fucking guy is enormous, you know. And if I was more of a, you know, hallucinogenic... Uh, psycho not maybe i'd try licking him you know actually I, I probably wouldn't you know i tend to be pretty consensual uh with my uh advances of licking things but uh this guy i mean he is he's 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 gigantic and he's just chilling there and uh, maybe i can help him get lunch by attracting more of these uh, bugs to the light right there but you could see uh there's that goddamn gland that made him so famous you know did you ever see that Beavis and Butthead episode about yourself? Did you ever see that? I can't believe how docile you are. 
And I, I wonder if that right there is the gland that uh, sends people on a magical place uh, that uh, I, I heard generally kind of sucks. Is that is that your DMT gland right there? What is that? I might be totally wrong in talking out of my ass. But uh, you can see he's, well, 7 centimeters times about uh, 2.2. You know? So he's about, that's a goddamn... That's almost a 20 centimeter long frog right there. No, maybe, maybe, he's, maybe he's about 18 centimeters long. Who knows? That's a big goddamn frog. And I might be talking, you know, I'm no herpetologist, so I might be talking completely out of my ass. This might not be the DMT frog. I don't know. But, uh, you know, DMT or not, it doesn't matter. He's a, he's a pretty fucking amazing an organism here that's able to live uh, in the Sonoran Desert. I mean, it's so incredibly hot. You know, we're up at about 4,500 feet. You know, so we're high up in this uh, oak forest, of course. And again, I believe that's Quercus amorei. Then there's uh, Quercus oblongifolia, I believe. Not a blue one. There's like three or four different species of oak. But uh, regardless, this guy is able to do his thing up here. And he's, I mean, he's He's enormous, too. He's he's very uh, fat. So he's obviously eating well. I don't know uh, what he's eating. I was hoping I could get him, uh, help him get some food by attracting moths to the light. You know, and maybe uh, you could do it with scorpions pretty easy. The scorpions normally uh, like it. You know, you just you bring the light up and they just, oh, there he goes. Yeah, no, that'll work. You bring the light up and it just kind of helps him, uh, helps the scorpions stuff their face. So maybe we could do it with this uh, with this toad, you know. Get the mouths to come over, you know. Dupe them in. Maybe get this guy a meal. Do you want a meal, huh? You just you, the amphibians, especially. I just they just feel very uh, skeptic, you know. They just kind of wondering what the hell's the matter with you, what you're doing, you know. They don't really. Uh, they're, they're certainly more trusting than many of the reptiles, but, uh, you know, look at that uh, beautiful pattern on this fellow, huh? Look at his ass. Get a nice picture of his ass. You don't mind. He's not even, you know what? You don't even, I bet he don't even understand what I'm saying. Right? He's got a nice ass, too. He does. You know what? I'll be honest with you. You got a nice ass. You know, you've been working out. I notice you've been working out. You know, maybe you're taking some tea or something. You you on some testosterone. You know, because you really, you really, it's working for you. Whatever you're doing, you keep doing it. You know. What you got on your you what you got on your eye over there? You know, and I he's he, he let me go away and get my camera and let me come back and he's just hanging out. You know. He's, you know, he's a gentle fellow. He's a, he's a very gentle fellow. I'm going to get this light out your face, probably. I'm sorry about that. You know, my manners, I, I lose my manners sometimes when I get excited. And again, look at this uh, intrusive igneous rock he's hanging out on. Looks like some kind of uh, granodiorite. diorite. Lots of quartz. Lots of these uh, little, not sure what that is, if those little platey things, those flakes are uh, mica or what. But there's, uh, you know, there's, they're everywhere. They're all over the ground. You know, because they erode out of this granite. You just see them looking like little talc flakes on the ground. All right, you want me to leave you alone? Probably. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I hope you have a real nice uh, rest of your night, all right? I'm not even going to go tell you to go uh, fuck yourself because I saved that only for humans. Okay? All right, buddy. Take it easy. See you later. Bye. You know, here's a nice little lightning bug, which, uh, you know, I know from growing up in uh, Chicago, you know, I used to get them over there. You still get them on the west side. You know, I've seen these guys on the west side. But look at this guy. I don't know if you could see that. Could you see him lighting up a little bit? I don't want to bother him too much. You know? Poor guy. He 
He's got just those two little, those two little dots that light up right there. Wonder if anybody even knows that this species is out there. We're in a pretty remote mountain range. Is he okay? I hope he's okay. 